right, here we have Dark Horizon from Best Service and Sanyu Score. So this library deals more with the low end bases, rhythms, and uh, things like that. It's based off the award-winning Elysion engine. So if you happen to have that, you should be instantly familiar with this and how it works. So of course it runs here in Native Instruments Contact, either the full version or the free contact player. Real quick look at the interface, four different sound sources. Of course, change those around however you want. Effects are built in, presets right here. You also have four different arpeggiators, which of course you can uh, set up however you want. Pan engine, mix engine right here, and even export your MIDI by drag and drop, which is uh, a pretty cool, pretty useful feature. And you'll also be using your mod wheel a lot with this library as you slide between those A and B settings. And of course the motion engine that we also have in here, which is uh, controlled, at least by default, with your mod wheel. Of course you can you know, use your mod wheel or uh, program in that uh, modulation if you prefer. So that's just a quick look at the interface here. So now we'll head in, take a bit of a deeper look, at the interface and all of our options here in dark. Horizon. All right, here we have Dark Horizon. Let's go ahead and go over the interface. Overall, it's pretty easy and pretty simple to use and to figure out. So of course it runs here in contact, either the full version or the free contact player. After you buy it, download it, and install it, it will be right here under the Libraries tab, and you'll find it right here. Expand your instruments, and right there is your single Dark Horizon in KI. So of course we can layer up to four different sounds within Dark Horizon. Right now we have four different sounds layered here. We can solo or mute any of these sounds. Click your blue button there to solo a slot, or of course mute it with the pink. We can change the octave of each slot, as you can see right here. So just click and drag up or down. So maybe we'll solo just this here, take it up an octave. Currently it's being you know, triggered by that arpeggiator. Let's take it down. There we go. Pretty uh, simple, self-explanatory there. You can always control click to set these things to their defaults, by the way. You can see the currently loaded sample in each different slot, so we can always click on it. Let's make sure we have that soloed. And we can choose from different categories and change up those sounds. And below that, you have your ability to assign it to the arpeggiator. Of course, if nothing is assigned, just solo that. So we just have just that sound and assign it to the arpeggiator. Let's head over here and just set this to an empty patch for now. Then I'll come back and assign uh, some kind of a sound to this here. That works for us. So then we have our effects section and you'll see this uh, for each of your different layers there. So on the instrument here, we can add a low cut. By the way, you can look down here in the information section of contact to see what each of these things do. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time uh, saying what they do because again, you can always read it down there. If I want an 80 Hertz low cut, we can turn that on, change the sample start, click and drag. Just change where you want that uh, sample to start. Then we have the, of course, the attack. Do we want it to slide in? The release, fast release long release, sustain right here. Then you also see these motion buttons right here. And you'll also see these throughout several of the different parameters here in uh, Dark Horizon. And what the motion does is allows us to use our mod wheel. In this case, it's come over here to your hamburger menu. And you can see the motion control is currently set to CC1. You can change that up if you want. Same thing for your other control here 
uh, by default, it's on uh, CC, uh, CC1. And CC1 by default is going to be your mod wheel. So with motion turned on, we're able to add motion to any of these parameters. Whenever we uh, flip on that motion, you can also change or constrain that motion by using your pink and white controls here. So if I want to constrain that attack between say zero and I don't know, a certain say 33%, then we can constrain that. Right now we have the release too low. Quick attack, bit of a slower attack. And again, you can do that to a bunch of different controls here. You'll also see this button right here, which inverts that uh, motion. So instead of whenever I take my mod wheel up, it goes up to 100% and down to zero. With that inverted, now it does just the opposite. So again, you can really customize the motion uh, of a lot of these different parameters. So real quick through these effects, we have some crunch effects. Of course, turn that on, change the type here. Different controls depending on the type of you know, distortion that you choose. We've got filters in here. Bunch of different types, change your cutoff. Of course, add motion to that if you, uh, you know, if you want. Resonant. And then amp effects in here. You choose a cabinet. Also, when you're back here in your effects, we can just use these arrows to go to the number two slot, number three slot, uh, number four slot, etc., etc., and then you have your overall uh, output of that right here, as uh, as well in some of these uh, some of these effects. We'll get back to the arpeggiator here in just uh, here in just a minute, but we'll move on right now to the presets. So we have a ton of different presets. You can access them up here under your camera icon. So your snapshots is what they're called here in, uh, in contact, or of course, in the enhanced preset menu right here in the center. And we have different categories, different types of filters, our meters, the feel, the type, et cetera, et cetera. So we have playable sounds, just for example, we can just single click those. And these sounds, the playable sounds, are not using the uh, the arpeggiator. We have lowest textures. Mono arpeggios. Rhythmic pulses. Poly animations. So you can always close that and see what everything is set to. You can also use these arrows. Go to the next. We can also quickly clear all of our tags, refresh, edit tags. If we happen to have some uh, user presets, you can always save your own user presets right, uh, right there. Of course, choose whatever tags Pretty self-explanatory stuff for uh, for that. So let me come back here and switch this back to an empty preset and we'll check out this arpeggiator real quick here. First, of course, I need to assign some kind of a sound. So that's just our basic sound. Let's go ahead and assign that to the arpeggiator. All right, let's come back here to our arpeggiator, and we have an A slot and a B slot. So the A, of course, is going to be the lowest position of your mod wheel. The B will be the top position of your mod wheel. And you can actually see how that line adjusts, uh, 
just there, all right? So we can start maybe on the A side with everything already down, which it already is. And by the way, you can also right click and just draw a line if you wish, but we'll start with everything, say down here. And on B, we can also start with everything all the way down here. If I do that, and we're not gonna hear anything at all except this last one, which is slightly up there, all right? So let's go ahead and dial this in. We have our meter controls, so 4434. Four, then you have your divisions, so 1 16th, 1 64. And then the, uh, the type here, up, down, down, up, zigzag, a lot of different types here. So let's uh, delve into this a bit. Maybe I'll pull over on the B side. Pull up one. Okay, then nothing else, of course. So let's pull up maybe one more here. And then transition between the A side and the B side with our mod wheel, you know. We go to a quarter. Of course, that's gonna be slower. Change the steps here. Let's make this a bit faster there. All right, let's change this to up, down, maybe play a chord. Let's add one more in there because we're playing three notes, right? All right, of course, change that to up, up, down. in, move out. Then you have all, which is the uh, chord. Playing all of them over and over. We'll go back to say up, down. That's pretty cool. We have a reset, so you can force it to reset after one bar or two bars or leave it to none. And then we have a note select. So I could put this on lowest, for example. We're just getting the lowest in this case. We're not getting these two notes repeating. If I did say just the top, we're just getting this note here. If I did maybe top two, we're getting these two here, right? Or lowest or middle, or you get the, you get the idea. We have a repeat, so we can have repetitions of uh, of every note say two times there go to one time or zero of course all right leave that on zero and by the way my tempo right now is on 100. My tempo in my DAW was, uh, was different. Then of course, the rate of my arpeggiator would uh, be different as well. So just keep that in mind. Then you can change these steps as we've already seen. So however many steps you want. So I can change up my time signature there. Or four, put this on, let's just say 12 steps. Then you have an option to skip the notes that are off here. Uh, let's just do this real quick. Go back to eight steps, actually. All right, so we're getting every note, right? If I turn skip on, then it skips these notes, uh, these areas that are off. And it plays the next note in order. Instead of skipping it, let me just show you what I mean here. Let's pull all of these up. It's playing it according to our, according to our up, down, or our down, up. We have, let's actually just go to down. All right, if I take this down, take this down. It ends up repeating this note here and here because these other two areas here were supposed to be those two notes. But if I turn skip on, then it actually keeps the sequence of my notes. It just places it on the next uh, available rhythm slot there.
All right. We'll just draw something in here real quick. Of course, we can go to our A side, change the uh, the lowest position that we want that to be in as we transition between our two slots, if we wish. All right. Then we have a transpose, pretty self-explanatory, right? Or of course, up. You can always control click to set that to the default. Then we have a pretty cool control here. This is an octave control. Let me set this up a little bit different actually. And the octave control repeats our played notes after our first turn, uh, either one or two octaves above or below. All right, let's take this octave up. So we can actually go to 16 steps on this one. up down or you take it up to uh two octaves all right kind of a cool control there then you have your copy and paste pretty self-explanatory but uh we'll do a copy here and then maybe we'll go over to our number two arpeggiator slot and we can uh paste in that pattern very quickly which is great if you're sharing sort of the same uh you know overall rhythms uh, between uh, between your slots. Then we have overall swing, uh, humanized controls, and the uh, ability to either half or double that, uh, that tempo. So add some swing in that. However much you want, humanize it, which of course adds imperfection, so we don't really need to go into that. Make it half the rate double the rate or one to one all right so that is your arpeggiator overall pretty if you've ever used arpeggiators before you probably already understand uh understand how those work and of course use your mod wheel to again transition between those two uh a and b layers Then down here, we have our settings page, which we've uh, already seen. So change your controller from your mod wheel, if you wish. Then we have either a monophonic or polyphonic playback behavior. As you can see there, only applies to instruments that have no arpeggiator assigned to them. Back to empty playable sounds. Just grab something there. So, as you can see, play a note. As soon as I play another note, this one here stops playing, right? I'll do it more extreme here. So if I want that to be uh, want that to be polyphonic, meaning I can essentially play more than one note, right? Then we have a really cool control. This is our export MIDI option. Now this only works when your DAW is running, okay? So the transport has to be running for it to record the MIDI data. Let me go to some sort of a poly animation. All right, so if my playback, my transport was running, let's do this again. See, now it's recording that MIDI data. All right, whenever I stop playback, it stops recording that MIDI data, then we can export all of that MIDI. Now it's important to realize that if you just start, you know, playing again, it's going to end up overwriting that MIDI data that we just recorded, okay? So make sure you drag it out or maybe record something to an actual MIDI track, uh, MIDI track first. Let me do this one more time because we erased everything we had uh, recorded. Make sure we're playing back, recording, whatever, right? Oh, 
All right, we'll stop right there. Then we can drag out this MIDI data that was generated for us, drag it right out into our DAW. And you can see we get MIDI files, MIDI tracks for each of our different uh, arpeggiators. Then of course we can use that to layer other things from Dark Horizon or even any other library that you want. So it's a really cool way to sort of generate something in Dark Horizon and then, you know, maybe use it with uh, something else to enhance your production even further. And then you don't have to redo, you know, redo a bunch of uh, a bunch of work trying to match everything up to what uh, those arpeggiators were doing here in uh, in Dark Horizon. And then we'll skip over the mixer for now and head over to the pan engine. So again, over here, we can set the total number of steps just by clicking and dragging. Make sure you turn it on up here if you want it on. Then again, we can set the duration. So maybe we'll go to, oh, let's go to an eighth for now and then set the source one through four or even multiple different slots to this pan engine or to this pan engine here. So we have two different uh, pan engines, of course, drag in any. Uh, changes that you want. Right now I have the number one slot assigned. So let me just solo that, right? Now we can see that it's panning back and forth. Of course, speed it up if you want. Slow it down, add more steps, etc., etc. Go back to an eighth. Of course, I can assign other slots to the same engine than maybe a different pan engine for slot four, make sure I turn it on. Head back here, take that off of solo. So now we're just adding even more motion to our uh, to our patch. Let me turn both of those off. And now we'll head over to the mixer, and this is pretty self-explanatory if you've ever used any kind of a mixer before. So of course we have the same mute and solo buttons up here. You have a overall delay send amount of course make sure we have delay on down there you can add motion to that or of course again invert that uh, motion you have your reverb send amount for each different slot and then our reverb right down here you can choose the type of course plate hall maybe change that to a medium hall and then the overall mix of that of course dial in the amount for each of our different uh, instruments that we have loaded up here panning for each individual instrument in here as well, and then overall level for each instrument. So of course, by default, everything comes out of one and two, but if for some reason you want to assign this out to its own channel and then maybe record that audio in your DAW or affect it with other plugins, then you are free to do that as well. Right here where it says default, just click that and change the output to a different output that you have set up in contact. Of course, you have to set that up first by coming up here to outputs, make sure you add however many channels that you want, set all of that up, then we can assign a different instrument out of stereo two and this out of stereo three and four, et cetera, et cetera. Then of course, in your DAW, you have to set up those individual tracks. So make sure we have those activated this out of the way. But of course, if I wanted to, I could add whatever effects that I want to these uh, individual tracks right there. And then we have compression built in, just like our other effects, our delay and our reverb. Just make sure you turn it on, set up your threshold, the overall gain for that. And sort of glue all of those different sources together. All right, so that is a look at the interface here and all of the controls in Dark Horizon.
So that is Dark Horizon from Best Service and Sanyu Score. If you want to pick it up for yourself, just head right over here. Of course, this link will be in the description below. There are two versions available, the full version, and of course, a cross-grade version. So if you happen to own Elysion, the orchestra, the orchestra complete, even orchestra essentials, you can get this for even less. And by the way, if you want to add another library to your contact collection, I highly recommend the orchestra series, especially the orchestra complete too. It really has all you need in it uh, for an orchestra, has a bunch of arpeggiators in it, and it's really fast and easy to set up a full track, a full score whenever you are using the orchestra complete. But we are talking about Dark Horizon here. So once again, head right over here. Links in the description below. Pick it up for yourself and experience the cosmic darkness of Dark Horizon. <laughs>